Hey, hey, welcome back. I recognize you. I'm Kevin, you know me, and we're hiking today. And I've noticed that when I go by people on hikes, a lot of people are venting. Hiking is great for venting. It's not complaining, it's just venting, getting things off your chest. It's like the difference between high maintenance and getting attention. Hiking is great for venting and getting attention. I think that's what I'm really trying to say. All right, grab your protein pills, put your helmet on, we're going for a hike. Over on this side of me today is a, a dude that I've known for a long time. In fact, he rented my apartment from me when I went off to New York to be on Saturday Night Live. And then he got a gig on Saturday Night Live. So I had no one to pay my rent. He's a funny guy, he's been in tons of movies, grown-ups. He was in Father of the Year and he was in Joe Dirt, which he wrote. And I was also in that movie, I played the mechanic. Best part of the film. He just wrote a book too called Almost Interesting, a memoir. He's a hilarious stand-up comic, and he's on this side of me today. That's right, today we're hiking with Mr. David Spade. Body, yeah. thanks for doing this hike with me. I've been trying to make this work for a while, but you're, uh, you're messed up. <laughs> well, I'm difficult. <laughs> Have people told you you're difficult? No, I know I am, but I'm not, I try not to be, uh, this one was a little difficult because it plays into 19 of my problems. What is your, your major problem? Is the, it The main one's the neck. The neck. neck. Neck bothers me. We're not supposed to get my hurt in my house because we don't have insurance. You know, my dad was gone and my mom couldn't afford it. So we sort of just skimmed over any time you were hurt. But I did a backflip and I practiced and I missed it. I landed on my face, all my weight, and I racked my neck, my jaw, my teeth were loose. I lost my memory for about a half hour. Jeez. I was like, hello, darkness. So I get back and the doctor goes, you got to take him right to the emergency room. And my mom goes, oh, of course. And then he leaves and she goes, Davey, you want to go to the hospital or Pizza Hut? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of meds are you on right now? I took three Advil just to do this hike because I did. knew this is going to be impossible. Anticipating it's going to be painful. It's already horrible. Yeah, yeah. Are you pretty comfortable? Sometimes it seems to me like you obsess on things. Is that true? Obsess on? Oh, I never heard that. I like that. Do you have a fear of missing out on things? Oh, FOMO? Yeah. I did have a lot of that. And, um, it's just fun. I mean, you're, you're, I'm on like, just shoot me, and you get invited to everything, yeah. and you screw up. And then I see people do it. I see like people that turn into, hey, how are you doing? Celebrities, and then they start being everywhere, and you go, oh, you should tone it down. But it's just part of the fun, I guess. Yeah, because you always seem to pop up at these <laughs> paparazzi sightings. Oh, boy. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> but they really want to trip you up. They said, uh, David, uh, they trick you in. David. Did you ever work with Roseanne? Last yeah. time I was there, I go, yeah. How was she? I said, very funny. We had a great time. She was very nice to me. Would you ever work with her again? Then you're stuck right there. Yeah. What do I say? I, yeah. And why do I give it to this guy? Right. So I just, I have no opinions anymore. When you go out to these things, do you usually bring a date or do you go solo? Oh, I usually, I, I have such a, a rascally reputation <laughs> that I... Really? Yeah, that's all I have, really. What does that mean? Oh, you gotta slow down the pace. Um, that, I, I, a skirt chaser, let's say. So, I feel, I just try not to be seen with girls whenever I can, to help it. During SNL, I, there's one model for sure I went out, but I barely dated SNL, it's too busy fucking freaking out. But, uh, and we have no time, you know, you work one to one. So, I went out with one girl and Jay Moore saw her, and then his book, he's like, Always models everywhere. I'm like, oh, I wish. <laughs> but you have had some really stunning, beautiful girlfriends. I have gone out with girls. So that is, that part. Heather Locklear, you went Heather out with. Heather Locklear, yeah. She was great. You still keep in touch with Way her? Way out of my league. I do. We, she, How's she doing? She, you know, she's going through stuff. Yeah. And we all are, you know. So I, I feel for people like that because I feel like we're all fucking one inch away from collapsing at all time. Ooh, that was close. When you were on SNL. Yeah. You shared kind of an office area with Farley, uh, Sandler, yeah. and Rock. Zabadoo, Sandler, yeah. Yeah, we did. You had to walk through me and Farley's to get to there. You were the like old... way in the back. Because when I would go, go back there, it was like having teenage sons. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of There a was Playboy house. magazines yeah. all over the floor. And yeah. uh, you and Sandler were talking about the night before. Yeah, Sandler, Sandler actually had way more fun than I did during those days. The fact that I was even doing stand-up in Hollywood was so miraculous, it did not cross my mind to be on SNL. And everyone thinks I'm lying. Me too. 
You think I'm lying? No, no. I, <laughs> I never thought about it either because we were stand-ups, right? Right. I mean, I couldn't believe I was making an okay living as a stand-up making People ask me, they say, uh, how did you get on Saturday Night Live? Although they phrase it more like this. How did you get on Saturday Night Live? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think your biggest hit was on SNL? Ooh, uh-huh. I never really... I never really knocked on the park like um, I'm gonna say like, Hollywood like Minute, like a Sandler or a Farley. I think Hollywood Minute was your, your yeah. biggest. Yeah, um, and that was. I'd say Hollywood Minute was was a good one. The receptionist, but I only did that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Gap Girls, but overall, yeah. it was more like just trying to be, you know, never character -y stuff. Really. Yeah, yeah. And then you got into trouble, didn't you, doing that week? Uh, oh yeah, Hollywood I said Pussy, Minute, right? No, you said something about Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. That was yeah. your other Skippy. Oh, my God. I was, yeah, Didn't he, Murphy. like, he kept calling He you? wasted so much time getting mad at me for 30 years. He said in Rolling Stone last year, he goes, you know what? I'm over that thing with Spade. I'm over it now. Yeah. Jesus, 30? I was over it 29 years ago. Is Skippy over the thing with you? No. <laughs> Skippy? <laughs> What's over here, man? <sighs> oh, hi. <laughs> Be careful. You all right? Do you have a lot of hats at home? Um, are tarantulas friendly? <laughs> oh, I, I do, have lot, do I have a lot of hats? I know, how dumb. I see you wearing hats all the time. I will tell you a trade secret. Yeah. I don't like my hair, so I wear a hat. It's not about hiding from fans. Are we still in LA County? Do you remember the last gift you gave to somebody? Mm. Um. Man, I have to take this. Yeah. It's funny. I'll put it back. Put it back where you found it. Uh, I, uh, the last gift I gave... That's a good question, Kevin. All right, let me ask you this. Yeah, I can't When you did... Them. All right, you don't give gifts. Okay, I get it. Okay, we're getting... Out. Should we flip around? Or? Yeah, we're going to come out. This is going to come out over here. Can you talk to Rock still? Yeah, what's up? Yes. Spade! We have such funny phone conversations and dinners that, uh... You know how you do it when you got comedians that you think yeah. are funny, and uh, yeah. like that night we all went to dinner, it was so funny. It was me, Dana, and Dennis Miller, and you were sitting on your feet. There behind, exactly. Knees, yeah. yeah, you had your knees curled like up under you. You were sitting like my 11-year-old sits. Yeah, <laughs> I've never seen a grown-up sit like that. Because you know what? Before. It opens up my back. It jams my neck. Is that That's what it. it is? Oh, everything's about that. Yeah. When you're in a restaurant or a bar, and you see an attractive woman that you like to talk to, what's your icebreaker? Um, that's hard. You know what it is? Let me tell you something. I have DM'd girls on the uh, old Instagram. Yeah. And that, people go, oh, you DM someone you didn't know? That's your dating site, Instagram? No, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> You're being silly now. Uh, but it is. Talk Can you tell when you're getting yelled at in a text? <laughs> yeah, I thought I hate when they go actually to all caps. All caps. That's when I know I'm fucked. I get yelled at by girls all the time. My <laughs> biggest thing I'm told, you're so embarrassing. That's Is that when, the biggest that's, complaint? Yeah, because when whenever you, uh, if, if you actually stop seeing one person and then suddenly you're seeing someone else. Oh, the biggest oh. <laughs> that was a Farley noise. <laughs> oh, let's talk about Farley, man. How great would a Farley been in the movie Grown Ups instead of you? Wouldn't that have been great? <laughs> <laughs> Check one, two. Um, I didn't go to his hosting. I would have probably, but... You were jealous? He was sort of... <laughs> I was jealous, and he was hanging with a shadier crowd of like... You know, when you do drugs, you change your... Believe me, I know. Your squad. I know it. I had to get rid of my old Rolodex. What's your biggest vice? <sighs> biggest vice? Um, I drink probably at least two drinks every night. You do like to drink, don't you? Yeah. You, the there was a time things. when you used to carry a little flask around with you. Yeah. That's but I happened? don't go crazy. I'm a family of Alkies and, uh... Oh, you? I'm not known for getting super shit-faced. I'm, uh, I drink only at dinner. Yeah. I don't drink in a day, and I... And dinner's all day? Uh, dinner's from noon <laughs> to seven. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I just drink two, I, because I'm, uh... I have a low blood sugar. That's the other thing. How do you think you're going to ultimately die? I don't know. I don't want to die. I got, I, I'm thinking about like it might happen one day. Let's talk about that assistant you had that almost killed you. Yeah. Did you know him? I knew him a little bit. You know, he looked like a Oh, a, a you're skater. part of the puzzle. Do I'm you know this? Part of the reason that he almost tried to kill you? Yeah. Did you know this? 
This is a big scoop. Tell me. So he was what, 6'2", 300 pounds. Skippy was his name. Very nice, very friendly. Uh, worked with me for three years. Everything was fine. Was and he that, living at your place? No, but he'd come over a lot, and then it was getting me blurrier, and then he, and then the big one. This is what, what turned the tide. Yes. Where he got really angry at you. I'm doing Joe Dirt. Joe and Dirt, yeah. Joe Dirt. I was in Joe Dirt. One of my favorite movies, right? So. I played the mechanic. Yes, UNICEF, mechanic at the junkyard. Mm -hmm. So, Skippy, what happens when you have an assistant like this, they read the script first because they get it when it gets, he probably printed it for me, you know? Yeah. They read it really quick. And he wants to act and be a comic. He wants. So he goes, hey, can I play the junkyard? UNICEF guy. Uh oh. And I go, oh, Skip, I don't know, because he doesn't have any acting experience, but you know, he goes, oh, I'd be great at whatever. So I said, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. So we get down to the wire, and he's so stoked. Ben Sandler calls me. And hey, uh, Kevin Nealon, wouldn't he be good for that uh, guy as the uh, UNICEF guy? Oh, no. And I go, oh, and I go, no. oh yeah, Nealon would be great. And he goes, hey, can you uh, give him that, put him in there? And I go, fuck, I love that. He's funny. I go, great. And I go, hey, Skip, you're sorry. Oh, and he no. goes, what the fuck, dude? And I go, oh, man. What do you mean? He goes, tell Sandler no. I go, Skippy, let me tell you how things operate around here. I'll tell you who the boss is. Yeah. Here. <laughs> I'm your boss. He's my boss. I go, Skippy, the guy, it's the reason the movie gets made. And he goes, fuck, fine. And I'm like, why is he huffing and puffing to me? And then I thought, this is getting weird. I, I, he, I don't even know why he doesn't get this. I yeah, I didn't does. want to do the movie. I, I know. That's the last thing I wanted to do. <laughs> it was not a good script. Thing. I did not like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait, that was my favorite of Sandler. Wait, what happened? <laughs> Cut to, we're editing the movie. That part comes up and he goes, oh, this is where Sandler fucked me. That night of the editing, when your scene came up, he leaves, pissed off. <laughs> we go eat. He's still grumbly. We go home. Laura Flamboyle came over. We were dating back then. She takes off. He goes and buys an eight ball of Coke. <laughs> Suddenly he's gacked out of his gourd. Comes over at five in the morning. I'm asleep. It's dark. In my doorway, standing, staring at me with a stun gun behind his back. He has a stun gun. Yeah. He's got a hat like mine, like this. Hand behind his back. I go, holy shit. What the fuck? And I go, Skippy, is that you? And he goes, yeah. And I go, I go, you were in bed? Yeah, I go, it's pitch black. I go, holy, it scared the fuck out of me. And he goes, oh, uh, yeah, your alarm went off. I go, my alarm went off. And I go, <laughs> you're totally and out he of goes, it. Is anybody here? She thought Laura was there. And I go, oh no, she took off. And he goes, and then I stood up and I go, hey, sorry they called you. I didn't even turn on the alarm. Wow. <laughs> oh, he hit you with a gun? Punches me. I go down, stun guns me. How did it feel to get hit with a stun gun? Uh, I, you know what? I, I was, it was such a adrenaline shot. Yeah. I rolled to the other side of the bed and rolled off and I go, what the fuck's going on? And I looked down, there's already blood. And I'm like, I don't even know where I'm bleeding. And I go, what are you doing? He goes, <laughs> he was out to kill like a robot. So, oh my God. So I, we, we fought again. He, he didn't say anything down. as this was happening. No. He wasn't saying, you screwed me over. No. Wow. He just said, Kevin, yeah. <laughs> he would, he would have come to my house next, probably. I go, I'll show you where Kevin lives. If that's the problem. Don't waste this stun gun on me. Still got some zaps left. <laughs> so, uh, I, I've been shielding you from this for so long, Kevin. It's time wow. you know. So then he, we fought three times, and then out, we were out in the driveway, and he got me out there again. So I ran right at him and hit him in the face. He wasn't ready for that one. And then uh, we went down and I got on him and started hitting him in the head. And he dropped the stun gun. So I got lucky, ran in, slammed the door, cracked it like that lock, like a quarter yeah. inch. He hit it like a rhino. Wow. I flew back, but it didn't open. I was like, holy shit. I had 10 steps in my room, slid under, shotgun loaded. You have a shotgun in your room? Yeah. Look Saved my you. life. You know who the only other person that knew? Skippy. Oh no. You know what the cops say? He what? was stun gunning me to incapacitate me to get the shotgun to shoot me. Oh my God. And then kill himself. I went in the bathroom, locked myself in. I was like shaking and I see blood on us. So I, I go, I got the gun, I gotta shoot you. I can't believe I go, I gotta shoot him. Cause he's unstoppable. Yeah. And so I, I open the door and I go, I'm gonna shoot him in the leg and then shoot him. I don't wanna, you know, right. shotguns for real. And I thought I gotta kill my friend. I don't even know what's going on. I don't know why he's doing it. So you never killed anybody before. I've you? never. I mean, I've, intentionally. I call the cops. I walk out back with my shotgun. 
standing there. Cop comes with his lights off. I have the gun. He, he's got his gun. He tells me to put it down, lay on the ground, and then uh, he goes, we're going back in. We got guys out front. We're going to search the house. I'm like, well, he's not in the drawers. <laughs> you don't need to search everything. So he was gone now. He left. They don't find him. He took some uh, 120 Tylenol PMs to try to kill himself, and then they found him. And he fought the cops a little bit. He was still he had no headache at all when they found him. Gacked out. They put him in 5150 and. Uh, 5150. What's that? It's a psych ward. They, they can arrest you. You know all those terms. I'm dealing with psychos all the time. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Did you ever talk to him afterwards about it? Never. That's a weird thing to not talk to somebody after you talk to him every day. For... Yeah. And I, I have a few questions. One, why did you try to kill me? <laughs> That's probably the number one. Yeah. Second, are you mad I didn't die? Hey, we're famous. Um, <laughs> hey, we're famous. Is that what you said? <laughs> you ever get mistaken for Brad Pitt? Um, some people. Do I have any money left? People, I probably wonder. They're like, do you know? What's you your net worth? <laughs> Girls Google it. People Google it. What's the most money you've ever withdrew from an ATM? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've done $300 before. <laughs> I sound like I'm on crib. <laughs>